environment that doesn't want greatness. So let's look at his presidential debate highlights and let's break it down. I'll tell you, I'm not a politician, Brett. You're right about that. I'm an entrepreneur. My parents came to this country with no money 40 years ago. I have gone on to found multi-billion dollar companies. I did it while marrying my wife, Apoorva, raising our two sons, following our faith in God. That is the American dream. And I am genuinely worried that that American dream will not exist for our two sons and their generation unless we do something about it. And I do think, Brett, it's going to take an outsider. Because for a long time, we have professional politicians in the Republican Party who have been running from something. Now is our moment to start running to something. To our vision of what it means to be an American today. If you have a broken car, you don't turn over the keys to the people who broke it again. You hand it over to a new generation to actually fix the problem. That's why I'm in this race and we're just getting warmed up. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring... Awesome, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Another episode of the CBMK Show because it is what it is. I am your host, Cody Kelly. And if you're sitting there, you're getting all this good, amazing content, you're being selfish, you're not sharing, you're not subscribing, what are you? Selfish. That's why you got to hit and share that like, subscribe button at CBMK. Look, we got an exciting, and I do mean an exciting episode because it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And when that time comes around, you know what also comes around? Politics. Politicians and personalities. In this episode, we're going to cover the first review of the first GOP, GOP uh, excuse me, debate for the 2024 presidential campaign. There was a lot of interest a lot of buzz and even a standout that might be the front runner for the gop party in this episode and i do mean this episode we're gonna cover the standout the vic ramaswamy he's having a meteoric rise almost familiar to another brother back in 2008 by the name of president barack Obama. Can he mimic the same results? Can he inspire? Can he galvanize? Can he set this company upon a new trajectory? Is this the answer that the GOP party needs? We're going to discuss that all when we get back to our sponsors. There's a hero in all of us waiting to be unleashed. All it takes is just that one last push. Activate the hero within with CVMK Global Supplements. All natural, steroid free, designed to enhance performance, build muscle, and increase energy. You are unstoppable. You can do this. Become your own hero at www.cbmkglobal.store. All right, y'all, go to www.cbmkglobal.store. I want you to get your protein transform. I want you to get your pre-workout superpower or warrior thirst for those that like a more mellower vibe. Your BCA saucy. And the creatine, you're trying to add that size in all the right places. Super thick. Only at www.cvmkglobal.store. All right, if you watch the debate, there were some key takeaways. First, we found out Mike Pence actually does have a post. He's not the dead among the living. Uh, he actually can uh, combat and articulate and show some sense of charismatic appeal. The problem is 
even when that is applied, it's still very, very, very bland and very, very, very boring. We found out also that no matter what anyone says, the front runner is Donald Trump. We also found out that there really is no clear challenger to the GOP throne. But there might be a dark horse in the race. There might be a hopeful that maybe we just didn't see coming. And we got to look at it because this person really stood out. I mean, uh, I think shattered the glass ceiling is what some might say. So we're going to break it down and see why the Vic Ramaswamy might be the candidate that wins the GOP party. So can he be the number one? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I think he has a great shot. I think if you look at his track record, uh, you'll see some things that are appealing. Uh, but I don't know if he is that guy right now. I think a few more debates will tell. The other thing is, is the GOP party open-minded enough to allow somebody of color to lead their party? Now you might say, man, you're race being, I, I don't know. I just, you know, they haven't done it. They haven't done, they haven't even had a person of color for a vice presidential candidate. So this would be the first and it would be the first and forced based off of appeal. So is Vivek Ramaswamy the real deal? Uh, I think we have to look at why people are attracting to his message. He's not the typical politician, right? But is he the Wall Street, you know, bourgeois, you know, billion dollar hedge fund person? Because that would be like more of the same. So let's look at Vivek. Let's look at the background. Education, San Xavier High School, Jesuit High School. Went to Harvard University for his BA, uh, member of the Phi Beta Kappa fraternity, interned for Amaroth Advisors and Goldman Sachs. Went to Yale Law School where he got his JD. Co-founded Campus Venture Network in 2007. 2014, founded biotech firm Roviant Sciences, uh, which is actually uh, incorporated in Bermuda. Received over $100 million in startup capital from QBT. RA Capital Management, Visium Asset Management. In 2015, he raised $360 million from his subsidiary, uh, Avant Sciences, for its uh, Interpridine. Interpridine is the medicine that they were they purchased, that they used to treat Alzheimer's disease, an Alzheimer uh, medicinal drug. They purchased the patent in the same year from uh, the Glaco Smith uh for for five million dollars they purchased the patent for five million dollars and they launched an ipo in 2015 which raised 315 million dollars he has other investments other things in business so i believe the appeal is you know he got in quote unquote honest he got out the mud you know he went into business he went into you know the capitalism and he built this amazing seemingly amazing life for himself and his family Right. Talks about his wife, talks about his children um, and that kind of, you know, that's what America's about. You know, you come here, you work hard, you can play hard, you get the life that you always wanted. So maybe that's the appeal. And I think for a lot of people, they're tired of politicians just being politicians. They want to see people who have real world experience enter into this arena. The, the, the problem is. Can the environment morph you and can you maintain integrity within the environment? Because you have to play within the lines. I understand having that appeal, even though, you know, he went to Harvard and went to Yale. So he's an Ivy Leaguer. It's not like, you know, he went to you know, Loyola or, you know, mid-tier university. He went to the best of the best. And I'm not counting that against him. But, you know, um, if all your presidents are coming from Harvard, you know, Harvard is going to produce Harvard. There's variations of Harvard. But a variation of something is still the exact identity of it with difference or with gradual descent or modification. So it's not a matter of this is something we've never seen before. It's just new to the GOP. Where I think Vivek's strength is, is his willingness 
to die on the sword. And what I mean by that, so bold that regardless of how you feel, he's standing on that as truth. And you have to negotiate around his truth. But his truth is not rooted in bigoted claims, but they can be quite callous. I admire the confidence of Vic. He was on the Breakfast Club. I mean, that took gall. He was the first GOP candidate to enter into the Breakfast Club. And, you know, him and Charlemagne and Teslan, they had their interaction. But the willingness to go there speaks volumes. President Biden has not been there this year. He's been there times past, particularly when he was campaigning. But he hasn't made an appearance lately. So when you have a candidate that says, hey, look, I want to give to Americans what I was allowed to create. And that's by changing some structural norms that benefit individual choice. The Vic seems like a plausible option. Though plausibility is not always good reality. My question for the Vic is that when you get in the office, can candidate the Vic be president the Vic? Because you're going to have to work with the powers that be. You're going to have to deal with the AOCs of the world, the Rashida Tlaibs of the world, the uh, Jeffries, the King Jeffries. You're going to have to deal with the governors, with the senators, with your own party. And even though you, he is running for the GOP, the Vic's not a moral conservative, right? He's more of a stationary an economical one, but not a true conservative, just not a leftist. So moderation is appealing, and I think that is a refresher considering you've been entering into this atmosphere of extremism. But how far are you willing to take it? How far can you go on issues like immigration status, uh, the armed forces, the buildup of our military, uh, educational reform. Can you really be the challenger to the status quo when you have to go against the unions? Now, the great thing about Vivek is he's a 38 year old, born in 1985. He also has enough gumption to want to fight. It's great to want to have the desire to fight, but if anything has proven true, success can make you lazy. So having this desire to want to fight, having this push, this internal drive, this internal mechanism to want to challenge, and then also having to work with how democracy really works in this country having to negotiate tiered or tiers of operation from federal to state to uh, you know municipal uh, to, to local can you provide the overall message that Americans can rally behind because the reality is big as youthful and as young and as vibrant as you are now they will challenge your stability so who do you pick as vice? Do you pick Chris Christie? Governor Christie, right? Do you pick Tim Scott? Do you pick Nikki Haley? Yeah. You know, Governor Asa Hutchins? So your cabinet is going to have to reflect strength, stability, and diversity. And that is going to be optically challenging because unless you're willing to be bold in all things and now move across the aisle and say like i want val demings in my cabinet you start pulling people from the other side to really present a balanced government you will find yourself 
in the myriad of symbolism, in the mud of symbolism. I think Vivek has the capabilities to do great things, but can you be great in an environment that doesn't want greatness? So let's look at his presidential debate highlights and let's break it down. I'll tell you, I'm not a politician, Brett. You're right about that. I'm an entrepreneur. My parents came to this country with no money 40 years ago. I have gone on to found multi-billion dollar companies. I did it while marrying my wife, Apoorva, raising our two sons, following our faith in God. That is the American dream. And I am genuinely worried that that American dream will not exist for our two sons and their generation unless we do something about it. And I do think Brett is going to take an outsider because for a long time we have professional politicians in the Republican Party who have been running from something. Now is our moment to start running to something, to our vision of what it means to be an American today. If you have a broken car, you don't turn over the keys to the people who broke it again. You hand it over to a new generation to actually fix the problem. That's why I'm in this race and we're just getting warmed up. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. So that was a great little cute interaction between Pence and Vivek. Uh, <laughs> but I think there's some things to pick up. We have to run towards something. Absolutely correct. We can't hand it over to the ones who broke it. We have to hand it over the leadership to a new generation. Absolutely on board. Uh, not promoting ageism. It's not what we're arguing. We're arguing is that there are certain things that a certain demographic will not consider naturally because it does not affect them. Pence or whoever would not be thinking 50 years out because they've already lived beyond the age of 50. They will be thinking at the most 20 years out. Somebody like Vivek is going to set something up for a hundred year vision if he's really that good of a leader. Can his inexperience hurt him? Uh, Vice Former Vice President Mike Pence is absolutely correct. It can hurt him if he doesn't possess the humility to allow the lessons from his predecessors to actually instruct him. All presidents make mistakes. So it doesn't matter if he came in with 50 years of leadership experience, he would make a mistake because Vivek is human, not because of his experience. What will hurt Vivek is the unwillingness to compromise, the unwillingness to listen, when to be bold or when not to be bold. So when you look at Vivek, I see the attraction. I see why he's rising. I see why people are flaunting towards him. But when you break it down and you look at what potentially can be gained, what potentially can be lost, the reality is both parties really don't have that one person, that one entity that will make people want to push push for, uh, forward further, that will make people want to galvanize, that will reach across both aisles. And even though you can't not be all things, all people, but there is such a energetic feel that is undeniable. For Vic has energies without a doubt, but is it entertainment or is it galvanizing, right? Does it, does it inspire or does it lead? And inspiration is great, but leadership is better. Quick word from my sponsors and my final call. I literally just tried the best pre-workout on the planet. With Superpower pre-workout, you have increased focus and a power boost every single time you work out. It's not only packed with 225 milligrams of caffeine, but it also has citrulline and creatine. It's insane how much energy and focus I had during my workouts. If you're ready to take your workouts to the next level, then ditch your current pre-workout and get the Superpower pre-workout to be your own hero. All right, y'all, www.cvmkglobal.store. Get your pre-workout today. Look. When we talk about the next wave of leadership, what is undeniable is that there is a fire in the belly. That is what comes with youth. 
But what also is undeniable that there is such a disconnect between generations that one risen entity is seen or viewed as a threat to the other one. And each entity is challenging its or each other's existence instead of focusing on collaboration. What can we pull from each other? And it seems like nobody's willing to really listen. Therefore, have we entered into a state of constant internal fighting or tribalism that ultimately is harmful for everyone? But Vic, if you are that GOP answer, it's more than just an amazing speech, a dynamic debate stand out it's going to be can you get others to really get behind you can you be that gop president that is forward thinking not left or right but just the ability to move the nation forward and if you are that progressive and that forward then you shall have success y'all if you want to keep seeing amazing content you know what you gotta do subscribe youtube cvmk Instagram, Stephen K underscore global. It is what it is underscore show. Stephen K33, TikTok, Stephen K globe, where it goes down. And until next time, guys, thanks. If you think exercise alone got me looking like this, well, think again. CVMK Global Super Thick got me right. I'm obsessed and yeah, I won't stop talking about it because it helped me grow in all the right places. Its creatine provides a fast and reliable way to increase your power, size, and shape. And it's scientifically proven to help you reach your physical goals in a safe, controlled manner. So if you want to increase muscle size, pump, and thickness in your muscle groups, you need Super Thick. <laughs>